These guys are a very much bolt together style of vehicle, which is good because there is a lot of adjustment that we can do, but that also means we have to do a lot of adjusting. Welcome back to Lost Cause Ranch. We're back here with the LS3 Swap Defender and we got some bigger bits to put on today. Some of you new people may not even known that I had some doors tucked away back in the corner, but we're gonna try and get these guys on today and see if any of my previous work was messed up or not. Doing some corrosion repair and starting from scratch with a lot of parts. There's always that possibility. But before we get to that, bet you can't guess. But yeah, we need to repair some more corrosion. If you remember from the beginning, the white Defender that we started off with, it wouldn't shock you. Not at all. All right, before we get the doors where they're supposed to be, we need to get the rear tub located and bolted down. We want that guy roughly where it is going to end up. In order to do that, we need to attend to that. That doesn't look too great. Neither does this side. So we need to cut these out, make some new plates with the correct holes, and we need them in the correct spot. To do that, we need to get the rear of the tub bolted in place. Luckily, we have those guys and some brand new back plates. We're going to use the authentic Jaguar pieces. This guy's painted and before final assembly, we will have gaskets in between the steel and aluminum parts to keep it from corroding again. But that sucked the tub back into place nicely. went ahead and made up our patch panels. These will plug each hole that we cut in the Defender. Got all the bad corroded areas out and we'll have this fresh clean aluminum in there. All we gotta do, bust the TIG back out. Got a pretty decent little fit up in there. We got it flanged on the bottom to match the OE panel. So we have our plates buzzed in. You may have saw that I kind of hopped around in different places on each of the plates while welding them in. When you're dealing with thin sheet metal, whether it be aluminum or steel, easy tendency to warp it. A little more controllable when you're using the TIG because you have a lot more precise heat control with the foot pedal and whatnot. But we still hopped around on these guys. That way after these are flattened out, we have a lot less hammer and dolly to do to make sure these are nice and smooth. Just makes the overall finish work much easier. Now it's time to grind. So we got our holes drilled in for that guy. Obviously this one is not gonna be the one we're gonna use, but it worked as the mock-up template. And both those guys are partially smoothed out. Didn't get to that side yet. Someone, not gonna name names, forgot to plug the batteries in last night to charge them up. So we got those guys charging. So we'll have to wait a little bit for that. Since she's not in here, I'm gonna blame Sasha. I mean, it was me, but it's easier to blame someone else. We'll do the final dialing in of all that when we have the tub off anyways, it'll be much easier. But we're gonna bolt the tub on so we can get to what we're trying to do today. They're hiding back there. That's 
not going anywhere. Before we get too far into the doors, this just came today. Kind of excited. Good old made in the USA. That one too. We got some fancy billet aluminum pieces. Yes, those guys are the start of our front drive for that 430 horsepower LS3. We might have to test fit those guys at the end of this video. Some of you guys from the Wayback Machine may remember when we moved the Defender into the small garage, we kind of stuffed these guys against the wall. I sure do miss having 4,500 square feet to play with. Can't wait for the new shop to be ready. for what feels like a year, maybe a little less, maybe, no, it might actually be a year now. We got these guys delivered when we got the new galvanized chassis dropped off. After that long wait, we finally get to put them to use. We're gonna, we're gonna see if any of this lines up. Ho hopefully they fit. That would be ideal. Real sharp knife, Joe. Slicing right through. We'll just rip it off. That one is much nicer than what we were dealing with before. Not quite as chooched out. The bottom frame is actually in one piece. Should be a good addition there. We got our fancy new stainless hinges. No more corroding on these guys. Plastic shims, hardware kit, new little E-clips. Those go right in there. We're almost ready to stick those guys on. We have one thing left to do, and that is to set up the bulkhead in the correct location. So that was one of the big reasons we wanted to get the tub locked down because on these defenders, if you're setting gaps, you gotta work from the back because there's no change in this. These tabs that the rear tub mounts to on the rearward most cross member are where they are. There is no adjusting that. You don't wanna have a gap in between those or shim it that way because that would be ugly. So the tub is what it is. Once you get that mounted, that's your starting point, which means we need to adjust this guy. And that's done via here. We don't have the correct bolt in that won't go in until we are ready to final assembly took some measurements when we tore the original one apart we want to be in the neighborhood of 34 and three quarter or hair under maybe 34 and five ace and that'll be our starting point but it's much easier to do without the door hanging on there to get it close then we'll have to dial it in from there with the actual doors our tub should be pretty close to squared or sill channels. Then we'll just have to make sure top of the bulkhead is square there as well. We're gonna set that up real quick. So we'll get that close. I need about three eighths of an inch. We're gonna set these guys in there for now to set our gap to see where we need to be. All right, so this is gonna be a bit interesting to do by myself because I'm gonna have to slide this bolt back, hold the bulkhead up and line these guys up. So you're gonna watch me struggle, but I'm sure you enjoy that more than me at least. I don't mind. I'm used to struggling. I need one more hand. Wasn't too bad. All right, so now we can check to see if we're in the zone. And we are right at 34 and three quarter. I think we'll probably have to suck it in another eighth inch or so, ultimately, but that'll get us in the ballpark. Seems to be working out so far. This 
this is going to be a touch interesting by myself. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this if it was painted. Of course I left the little torques on the bench. See if we can do a little reachy reach. We've got it. We're just having issues all over here. I think I need a sandwich. I'm hungry. These things don't freaking thread worth shit. We're gonna figure out what's going on with those guys. All right, so we had one of our little E-clip nuts fall in when I pulled the door back off. Thankfully, they're stainless, so I can't use a magnet. Time to go fishing, I guess. There we go. Got it. Nope. Had it. Now we got it. Our issue was adjusting these guys. The clip itself was a little too loose. Let the nut lean back in there so we couldn't come straight in with the bolt. So we should be in good shape now. All right, we're gonna try this again. And before I forget, uh, we got a tiny bit of anti-seize on these because it is stainless on stainless and I don't want it to gall up. Well, that side was a touch more cooperative than the driver's side. We do have some tweaking as expected. We have a galvanized bulkhead, which is better rust-wise, but these guys are a little more notorious for additional tweaking, we'll call it required, to get it to 100%. We knew that going in, and I'd rather have the corrosion protection in the trade-off of a little easier installation. We'll dial this all in. Before we do that, I wanna get the top set on so we can make sure all our gaps all the way around are perfect. So there is gonna be some tweaking needed, but it is super nice seeing some doors on this guy. Starting to look like a real defender again. We have to adjust the tub height on this side. We're dealing with two issues. Uh, we need to modify these holes up front on the bulkhead and get the door slid forward. And we're also dealing with a little misalignment on the rear tub. We need to lift that up and get it tilted back just a hair. These guys are a very much bolt together style of vehicle, which is good because there is a lot of adjustment that we can do, but that also means we have to do a lot of adjusting. We'll get the top dug out of storage, get that on, and then we can dial this in. I'll show a little bit of that on video, but it's kind of a boring process and I don't want to waste your guys' time. This guy right here is gonna hold the alternator. We're keeping that on the passenger side. Down there will be this guy. Look at that nice chunk of billet aluminum. We're gonna knock the bolts out of there. But we went with a couple ICT brackets. This one is gonna be the AC compressor. That'll be down low, alternator up high. That leaves us with the power steering pump, which will go right there. But we don't have a bracket here for the power steering pump. So with the short nose water pump, no one makes a power steering pump bracket that I liked. So to solve that problem, we went ahead and picked up this guy right here. These aren't anything uh, super groundbreaking anymore and I'm late to the game, but we picked up a little 3D printer. We'll be able to prototype that bracket and see if we can make a power steering pump work. Might be a useful little toy. But with that being said, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and we will keep rolling on the Defender. We'll catch you on the next one. Got my Land Rover Hot Wheels stash hidden back here.